As rent prices rise across the country, more people are struggling to make ends meet every month. When they turn to affordable housing, many are met with a new set of problems, wait lists that in some counties are nearly two decades long. It's forcing some families to take extraordinary measures to keep a roof over their heads, a goal that they can't always achieve as they struggle for years, not knowing if or when they'll ever get approval. ABC News has collaborated with our ABC-owned television stations for the past six months, investigating just how deep this affordable housing crisis goes. Our Stephanie Ramos has the story. I love everything about San Diego. The beaches are lovely. It's usually pretty sunny. You usually could wear flip-flops pretty much year-round. I ended up in San Diego. I was married. Um, my husband was stationed here. And um, I moved here from the Bay Area in, I think, 1996. And I stayed here after divorce because I loved it here. When I signed up for Section 8 and um, low-income housing, my kids were very small at that time. I did not feel that I would be on that list for 12 years. For Tanya Frazier, finding long-term housing within her budget has been an uphill battle. She's disabled, she's taken care of her three children, and has been waiting 12 years to be granted affordable housing by the San Diego Housing Commission. I'm just going to check myself on the waiting list and see where I am. Here we go. This is the waiting list portal, August 9th, 2011, at 519 PM. Tanya says she's been checking on her status every month for the past decade, calling, waiting for a letter in the mail. Still, no one has been able to tell her where she is on that list or how long she'll have to keep waiting. Frustrated, sad, sometimes hopeless that I'm never going to come up on that list. The eighth biggest city in the U.S., San Diego's real estate business is bustling and growing. However, public housing complexes are not a common sight. ABC News, in collaboration with ABC-owned television stations, has spent the last six months investigating the public and affordable housing crisis affecting cities and towns across the country. We found that for housing vouchers, which are local subsidies helping renters find homes on the private market, the average wait in San Diego County is eight years. And for public housing, it has the longest wait time of any large metropolitan county in the entire U.S. In San Diego County, the wait list for public housing is over 18 years. We're just not building um, public housing like we used to. We're not providing enough housing vouchers for people to use on the private market. Today, what we're seeing is a housing crisis unlike one that we've seen since the mid-20th century. The average rent in San Diego County increased by about 54% between 2011 and 2021. I, I do have a roof over my head, but rent is expensive. It's 29.49 for this little house. With more than 90% of her income going to rent, Tanya has to share this house with her grown children and her friend Rosa. When I, I try to apply for low income, the waiting list is closed. And they tell me to keep calling, and I do, and I keep calling, but the waiting list is still closed. This hard reality has pushed people in San Diego to find desperate solutions. Some of them not finding a solution at all. We're seeing rates of homelessness steadily increase. We're seeing shelters filling up. We're seeing folks uh, struggling with massive amounts of debt as they try and pay their rent. We're seeing evictions rise. And stable housing is a solution to those problems. I have a bad habit. I love looking at people's windows because I just like to live, see how they live, you know, because I don't have that steady. It sucks seeing how many buildings that are brand new being built and me not being able to get not one. 
Brunel Whitfield has lived in San Diego her entire life. She joined the housing voucher waiting list right after having her first son 12 years ago. It's like I feel like there's like somebody in there just, nope, Brunel Whitfield, we're not getting you nothing. Brunel says she has struggled every single day during these 12 years, taking care of her four children. I've done miracles to keep us off of the streets. I experienced homelessness a couple times, you know, um, unfortunately. I believe me and my kids' lives will be different if San Diego's wait list was like a couple months or a year. It would open doors where I would be able to put my daughter to a gym, my son doing, you know, soccer or something. I can't even, you know, do extra things for them like that. People lining up overnight to apply for affordable housing in New Jersey. By noon today, 1,500 applications were submitted. Housing officials are set to talk about the opening of the waitlist lottery for Section 8 housing vouchers. For the first time in more than a decade, the Philadelphia Housing Authority opened its housing choice voucher waiting list. But the website couldn't keep up with the demand. Christian Leto is here. The lack of public and affordable housing is a widespread issue. For instance, ABC's data analysis shows that public housing wait times exceed 17 years in Suffolk County, New York, nine years in Meeker County, Minnesota, and six years in Hines County, Mississippi. Right now in America, how big of an issue is public housing? We haven't built any large-scale public housing since uh, Richard Nixon put a moratorium on that construction in the 70s. But the demand for affordable housing has only increased um, uh, recently as you know, housing prices have increased and wages have stagnated. There isn't a state in the country where someone working at minimum wage with 40 hours a week can afford a typical you know, two-bedroom apartment. When you went to the Philadelphia Housing Authority, what did they tell you? Well, they didn't tell me anything. They just told me to just fill out the application and just leave it. They gave me a receipt, so. And there's nothing you can do from there. It's but nothing but wait. Wait. <laughs> wait it out. Don Adams was raised in Philadelphia, eventually settling in Atlanta. Four years ago, her life was shattered when she lost her daughter to gun violence. She decided to return to a place that held her most precious memories. She's been waiting on the public housing list for four years, living with a friend and not making enough to afford a place of her own. It gets stressing, it gets depressing. Sometimes I, I just be like, oh boy, well, should I just go back to Atlanta, <laughs> you know? Sometimes I see days like that, but it's, it's, it's rough. Last year, Don was selected in a unique pilot program that provides monthly stipends to people from the bottom half of Philadelphia's housing wait lists. She's been saving those allowances so she can eventually use that money to rent a home. How does that make you feel to just, for, for a number of years now, to not really have a place to call home and be able to put your stuff and and still waiting. That's frustrating sometimes, but I figure since I came this far and I made the, I got, <laughs> I got picked from that. I, it's won't be, I figure it won't be long before I find somewhere to go. This pilot program will only last two and a half years. And during that time, Dawn is unlikely to reach the top of the housing wait list, according to estimates by the Philadelphia Housing Development Corporation. In the meantime, average rent prices in the area increased 9.5% between 2019 and 2021, according to the latest census data. But who is supposed to fix this? Is it each state, the counties, or the federal government? In the 1990s, Congress passed the Faircloth Amendment, which effectively froze the amount of public housing units that were in existence at that time and said, we're only gonna fund up to this many units nationwide. So that effectively banned the construction of any new public housing units, and that bill is still in effect. HUD is a bit between a rock and a hard place. They want to sustainably and affordably house residents across the country, but Congress simply isn't allocating enough money for them to do that. 
If we made it a priority, we would find the money for it. ABC News reached out to the Department of Housing and Urban Development several times, but the agency did not grant our request for an interview. In a statement, the agency said HUD recognizes that the country faces an affordable housing shortage and that in this year's budget proposal, the administration has requested additional resources to address this issue. I don't think we're doing enough, and I think that there is um, the will, but we need to find the way in order to build bipartisan support to get it done. It's important to understand that the housing market in this country has always been a public-private partnership. And the federal government and state and local governments um, need to do more to build that partnership so that this terrible shortage of housing can be fixed. There isn't one specific cause for this deeply complex issue. And advocates say there isn't one simple solution. But more federal funding, they say, could go a long way for millions of Americans still waiting for a place to live. 12 years, that's a long time to be on a list waiting for Section 8. And sometimes I feel like giving up. But then I think, OK, well, I've been waiting for this long, so why not wait any longer? I feel as though it's going to happen. I mean, I'm not the one to give up, so I believe it's going to happen. I just got to be patient. Just be patient. I want security for my kids. That's all I want. I don't care what kind of place it is. I don't care if I have to start in a hut. I will start in a hut. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.